First of all, you, you are originally from Belgium. Yes. And where exactly? I'm from Leuven, Belgium, a city called Louvain. Okay. A city close to Brussels, about 20 minutes. Okay. And, and why retinal research of all things? So it's a little bit of a roundabout way, but I'm originally trained as a virologist and an engineer and uh, was fascinated by the concept of gene therapy, basically using a gene as a drug. Okay. And I've been working in this field for 15 years now. Um, and in the past five or so years, I realized that in the eye, in the retina, we can really make a difference. And so for that reason, I chose to focus on building out gene therapy in the eye and trying to bring it to what I call a, a, a platform therapeutic, mm -hmm. um, to have it be useful for more than just one indication here and there, but to actually walk ultimately through the doors of a, 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 a hospital that is specialized in eye diseases, where gene therapy could truly be given as an option for a variety of disorders. So we're talking about kind of universal treatments? Not necessarily possibly. universal. You know, when you walk to the doors of a hospital right now, you could either see a doctor that manages your disease or you could see a doctor that prescribes you a, a, a drug or you could see a surgeon and have a therapy. I want to have a, an extra bucket there, which is ultimately have gene therapy. And that may not be applicable to everything, Okay. but it would be a, a true modality. Okay. And right now, are there a couple of specific, pro I, I think you're involved with uh, uh, several different things, but are there a couple of specific projects, for instance, maybe one or two um, funded by the foundation that you're involved with? Sure. So there's um, one where the foundation has funded me to work at uh, creative ways to bring larger genes into retinal cell types. We work with these delivery vehicles called vectors to shuttle genes into cells. And one of the most attractive vector systems, called AAV, adeno-associated virus, can only hold so much DNA. Mm -hmm. Whereas many of the genes that we want to study are actually larger than that. Mm -hmm. So we have a grant that tries to, through the FFB, that tries to look at a variety of ways of overcoming that problem. So that is, that is one area of expertise that we're trying to build out in the lab, and we're trying to engineer new ways of doing this. The second way which, which excites me a lot is uh, the field of uh, what's called optogenetics. And this is basically trying to find, if you want, a generic way of treating blindness independent of what causes the blindness, at least when it's due to a retinal defect, or a defect in the retina, which basically uses molecules that in nature capture lights and we put those back in the retina in the right position so that they connect back and signal to the brain uh, and give you light perception and ultimately hopefully vision. And that's a very exciting field. It's still early days, but there's a lot of potential there. And where do we find these from nature, these molecules? We find these molecules in, in a variety of organisms that do what's called phototropism. They, they move away or towards light. Mm -hmm. uh, so for example, uh, algae uh, do this, uh, uh, or certain types of archaea bacteria uh, uh, do this. And that's where we basically stole these genes from, and now we're trying to use those to treat uh, blindness. And you say you've been doing this for 15 years. Yes. In that time span, <clears throat> have, have, have things really, in terms of research advancements, in the last few to several years really sped up compared to when you first started? Absolutely. I mean, uh, I would say, particularly in the eye, particularly in, in this type of gene therapy, the time is now. Um, and what has happened in the past decades, and I only have been part of a small uh, segment of that timeline, uh, has really uh, a, a little bit of a roller coaster, but to some extent a, 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 a learning path towards the success that, 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 that we have, have now. We have first had to make these vectors, these delivery vehicles. Uh, we then started testing those out in animals. And relatively early on, people started looking at the safety of those in humans. Um, in that sense, not always everything went the way it was planned, and we actually had, in the 90s, uh, uh, we hoped for success, but we were met with, with uh, some, some pretty dramatic failure. 
Um, and what happened then in the early state, that the first decade of this century is we went back to the bench, developed new tools and learned more about the biology of doing gene therapies. And we've learned that in a short number of years and, and, and reached these first clinical successes such as an LCA. When somebody comes to you and asks you, you know, I have this disease and, and what's going to happen? When, when, when am I going to be cured or is my disease going to be taken care of? What, what is usually your answer? It's a very difficult question to answer uh, and it's going to be very specific for uh, the individual. So I don't have one stock answer, but what I try to do is bring them a little bit to my world to highlight some of the complexities and some of the opportunities that are there. Um, so it's it's not a single sentence answer. It's okay. often a conversation that starts and that often continues for for, for a long time, often years, uh, uh, to 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 get that person to a stage of of, uh, of trying to understand where where the field stands. Do you, as somebody in your position, have to kind of remain somewhat aloof in these situations? And let's say, for instance, a parent comes to you with a young child just been diagnosed with LCA. You're you have two children of your own. I mean, it, is it difficult for you not to become emotionally involved, or can you become emotionally involved and still yeah. do your job? I think there's always an emotional component when you're faced with these kinds of questions. Mm -hmm. And I think in, in, in its essence, that's the motivation why we do this. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's what I take from it. But you're right, I mean, we, uh, as scientists, can't necessarily be steered by just emotion. So I see that as my fuel, but it's not uh, my doesn't give my day-to-day -day orientation of what I do in life. Right. Okay. Uh, and I think that's important to balance properly. Is this your first time at one of the visions conferences? Yes, it is. I know you're going to be here just for a couple of days, but what do you see as the value of being here yourself? So again, we as scientists need to get out of the lab uh, and see patients and talk to them and see what's needed and address the questions that are there, because it's a it's a complex uh, uh, a, a complex world we're living in. Particularly looking at these treatments, the news media that's reporting on on on, on progress. So there can be a lot of confusing uh, thoughts that are circulating. And I think this is one of the places where we can have that exchange um, with uh, patients and where we can also go back and uh, uh, re steer our research in ways that avoids misconceptions uh, down the line. And you, you mentioned before how uh, at least one of your projects, maybe a couple are funded by FFB. Um, other than what they're doing for you right now, what do you think the value of the foundation is? I think the, the main value uh, besides from funding my research, <laughs> is uh, is a channel for that communication that I just discussed, the, the, the mm -hmm. communication between basically the bench and, and the patient. And that has to go both ways, and the foundation does an excellent job in, 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 um, in, in, in particularly that setting. So I think, for example, patients that, need, that want to know about what clinical trials are there and how to evaluate these clinical trials. I think the foundation provides an, an, an excellent uh, role. Um, and then for researchers to know which diseases to focus on, which opportunities are there, uh, that's another uh, good thing from our perspective for the, that the foundation has to offer. So when you get out of the, um, the lab, are these the clothes you wear usually, or do you wear these in the lab with a white coat over them? I I, I actually often go to work. I actually was working this morning. Oh, the okay. Lab, so this is okay. How I go to work. So you just get yeah. right to it. And uh, I don't know. Last question, a light one. What do you do for fun? I mean, do you actually do anything aside from work? And of course, you have family. But do you have fun I, things I, you do? I have to say, I had a very busy year. We've been setting up a lab. We just moved, uh, both as a family as well as with my lab. So my past year has been. Uh, lab, which is fun, yeah. Uh, okay, and, and it's that's that's Good. my dream job. Yeah. Um, uh, but spending time with my daughters and my wife is just uh, uh, invaluable. Okay, and that's the fun that I really have. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. I appreciate Cheers. it.